Hello and welcome to Top of the Cup. Hashtag FSG out has been a notorious feature on Twitter for the last few years. And to be honest, it's completely unwarranted attention. A lot of people are obviously very narrow-minded and don't realise where we were before the Fenway Sports Group took over. So I want to make it very clear before we get into this video, I do not come with pitchforks. It's just more of a progression under FSG that we've obviously made since Gillette and Hicks and I'm just wondering whether it's come to an end and basically we've plateaued under them because it's fair to say, you know, FSG have done wonders for the club. They've got us out of debt, they've turned us into a profitable organisation and they've got the right people in charge of the day-to-days. So for that, we can be eternally grateful for but this season's just shown a bit of a plateau when it comes to transfers and obviously the dip in form over the last six to eight months. So we're going to get into all that. We're going to talk about the summer transfer window coming and basically how we as the Liverpool fan base need FSG to step up to the plate. And if you do enjoy today's Top of the Cop video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Liverpool content. As there is a lot coming to the channel, we do have a few giveaways planned, so make sure you subscribe for that. And with that being said, let's get into it. Yeah, so as mentioned in the intro, you know, FSG out is a notorious feature and has been for the last four or five years, if I'm being honest. Now, obviously, just a quick recap, under Gillette and Hicks's reign was probably one of the worst that I've ever, see, I've ever seen from a financial point of view. And when they sold the club, I think every Liverpool fan in the world was happy to see the back of them. But obviously when Fenway took over, you know, they were another American conglomerate and people straight away just tarred them with the same brush and didn't like them. But let's be very clear, FSG have turned Liverpool, as I say, into a very profitable organisation. The marketing strategy with all, you know, the American brands like your Dunkin' Donuts and things like that, you know, everything was nailed. They've profited a lot from obviously their experience within owning businesses, and that's great. They cleared our debt, they've improved our turnover, and they've turned us into one of the biggest teams in European football. And you know, they've done it with budgets in place. They're not oil rich like your Chelsea's and your Man City's. And I don't want that because obviously there is a point when that becomes unsustainable, you know, because you can spend that much money and if you don't win things, you know, people are gonna go bankrupt or people are gonna lose interest in their football clubs. And I don't want Liverpool run like that. Look at the Chinese league now. They spent all those hundreds of millions of pounds to get a few highly rated players on their books. And the champions of the Chinese league folded after they won the league because it's just unsustainable. So it is risky. So to keep a business model in place is important. Now, from an expenditure point of view, you know, it is, again, very, very clear. FSG do not spend money. You know, their net transfer spend over five seasons comes in as something like 115 million, which is the seventh lowest in the Premier League, with only the likes of Southampton, West Brom, Newcastle, Burnley, Crystal Palace, and Leeds beneath them. Bear in mind, Leeds only just came up as well. So, for the champions of England to have a net spend of 113 million, and after the trophies that they've won over the last couple of years, FSG are not shy of a few quid. Now, any money that they made from players has been given back to Klopp and Edwards in the sense of obviously the money for Coutinho, you know, we got Alisson and Van Dijk, that's brilliant. And to be fair, we've only qualified for the Champions League for the last four seasons. Obviously, in those four seasons, we've reached two Champions League finals, we've won one. Prior to that, you know, we were in the UEFA Cup final and, you know, we've not been a dead set, let's put it, for the top four for like say the last decade like all the teams so I'm not too worried about the amount of money they spent back in 2016 to 17. I don't expect hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds spent on a team. I still don't now, in all honesty, but we were a progression underneath Klopp and Edwards and obviously Fenway Sports. And now we've reached the pinnacle of football. You know, we won the World Club Cup Championship. You know, we won the Champions League. We won the Super Cup. We won the Club World Cup. And then we won the Premier League all in 12 months. So Klopp and Edwards have took us from obviously an average team, let's be fair, to an actual dominating force within European football, who even the big guns like your Barcelona's do not want to draw, which is something so refreshing. But then this transfer window, after we won the league and obviously have now become 
the poster boys for European football, the team that everybody wants to beat. We are a scalp within the Champions League, it's fair to say. Klopp was only allowed to buy Thiago and Jota on a drip feed scheme. Now, let's not beat around the bush. FSG, at this point, deserve no credit. The only reason we've got Thiago and Jota in is because of Klopp, obviously, looking at those two players and then Edwards working his magic to, to get them on a drip feed. And you know, they didn't back Klopp after winning the league because one of the hardest things is to defend the league after winning it. And Klopp clearly just didn't get that back in with the money. You know, the best teams that obviously have won the league over the years, your Man United, your Chelsea's and now your Man City's, they go again, they win the league, Next season, they still buy a superstar that challenges the three players who've been scoring goals for fun the season before. You know, they refresh every season. Man City didn't, to be fair, last season. That's probably why they failed to actually deliver. This year, they had the likes of Foden coming through. Gundogan's played brilliant. And, you know, they've had other players, fringe players, who have looked outstanding. Mares as well, for instance, has been brilliant in recent weeks. And in the summer, you know Aguero's going and you know they're going to spend the money to bring in a striker that's going to last them for the next 10 years. They're going to be looking at your Haaland's, your Mbappe's, just to nail down. After winning the league, they're going to cement obviously themselves towards the top of the Premier League table by making statement signings. Liverpool haven't done that for three years. We've stayed with Salah, Mane, Firmino. Obviously, we've brought in Jota recently, but he's been injured. And, you know, I don't want to see Fenway Sports abusing Klopp and Edwards' capabilities because, obviously, we understand that they can get Thiago's and your Jota's on a drip feed situation, but don't abuse that quality. Back them. Give them the money to actually work openly and trust them going into this summer's transfer window. You know, it's got to a point now where we've reached the pinnacle and now we need FSG, you know, to show that they're not just here now to steady the ship. We need to go to that next level to push on in the Champions League and the Premier League next season. Fans want to win everything in football, but obviously you're not going to win every trophy every season. But Fenway Sports' statement this season was clear that they were not hungry enough, like the fan base, to go again. Now, if FSG don't want that, Fair enough. If they don't share the same aspirations as the Liverpool fans and have took us as far as they possibly can under a business model which has made Liverpool, as I say, back into one of the top dogs of obviously European football, then fair enough. We'd shake the hand and we'd obviously wish them well in the future. But I think this season Klopp needs a few hundred million regardless if we sell players or not. You know, trim the fat by all means and get rid of obviously a few squad players that are ageing or simply don't have a future Liverpool. And back Klopp and Edwards to sign two or three world-class players that can come into our starting eleven at any time. It's clear we need a centre-back. If Genie Wanyaldum's off, we need somebody else in the midfield. And to be honest, if Genie did miraculously sign a new contract, I do think Milner may be coming to an end of obviously his time at Liverpool. It's unsure if Naby Keita is going to stay fit enough to be pivotal enough at the club. So I do think we need to strengthen in the midfield. And although we sign Yotta, I do think we need to sign a world-class number nine who's also going to chip in with 20 to 30 goals a season. I know there's not many of them out there, and I know you're probably just thinking Haaland and Mbappe, but if one of those players does want to come to Liverpool, you need to throw all your money at it, because regardless how much you spend on it, you're getting your money back. It's just a statement signing. You know, you're getting your money back from a commercial point of view, all your shirt sales and obviously your sponsorships, but they're going to do it on the pitch as well. And you know, there's questions asked there regarding the front four that we've got now in the likes of Infamino, Yotta, Mane, Asala. Do you need to get rid of one or not? We don't really need to talk about that now. So that's a debate for another day, but things need freshening up. It's not going to come cheap. And if FSG are not willing to do that, then then I think they need to move on, you know, maybe try and implement what they've done at Liverpool at another, obviously, club around Europe. 
but I really do hope that they just stop abusing Klopp and Edwards' capabilities and actually back them instead of just running this business model that, albeit sustainable, it doesn't look like a business model for one of the biggest football clubs in the world, which Liverpool want to be for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And you know, I'm not saying FSG aren't going to back Klopp, because if they've got any ambition, they'll see that this season's been a bit of a drop-off and they'll go again. Because if they're not going to spend money with Jürgen Klopp and Edwards, they're not going to spend it with Steven Gerrard or any other manager that come in. It'll just be the same business model. And, you know, it's not going to win us trophies, unfortunately. Anyway, if you did enjoy today's video and you do have any comments on what I've talked about today, please leave them down below and I will discuss them further with you. If you are a red, please hit that subscribe button because there's going to be plenty of Liverpool content going forward. And with that being said, take care.